so tick bone fever is a tick fever what we call is a serious condition if it's not treated in the you know first few hours okay. so those kind of treatment normally it can be treated within 24 hour, 25000 right. but if that gets worsened say internal organs are damaged kidney damage is there right. the cost would you know escalate really great and it's very fatal as well at a certain stage we all love pets I'm sure many of us have spent hours and hours scrolling cute dog and cat trails on Instagram. When we adopt a pet, they evidently become a key member of our families. And evidently so, not just the world over, but even in India. In fact, India has one of the fastest growing dog populations in the world and has an estimated dog population of over 1 crore. Dogs are in fact the most common pets in India. and we have the sixth largest pet dogs population in the world we have all heard of ding couples for those of you who don't know it essentially means double income no kids couple according to the census of 2011 nearly 42% rural and 22% urban families have a ding lifestyle an extension of that is now the ding ward couples which is double income no kids with a dog couple Many millennials are looking at adopting a pet and becoming dog parents instead of having biological children. All this essentially shows how much we love our dogs. The population of people adopting dogs is only increasing in India. But how much are we aware of different health conditions or problems that their pets or their breed in particular can be exposed to? According to Journal of Animal Health and Production Report 2017, Despite being pet dog owners the awareness related to different zoonotic diseases or conditions pet can develop remains very low making pets susceptible to various infections and diseases and not just that many dog owners or parents are actually unaware how expensive their treatments can be the same report pointed out that 43.33% pet owners in fact felt the high cost of treatment was one of the major constraints faced in prevention of diseases in pet dogs while 36.25% pet owners pointed out non availability of good insurance coverage for dogs as one of the major constraints pet insurance for dogs that sounds like something we have never heard of right but the fact is compared to a human being dogs typically have a lower life span which means they grow up much faster the kind of diseases infections or medical conditions they are prone to is very different for example apart from rabies many probably haven't actively heard of diseases like parvovirus lyme disease leptospirosis etc or don't know different types of vaccination a pet dog needs to take if you're a pet owner there are various things you need to be aware of as the health of your pet is very important and dependent completely on how well you know things you're listening to the brand new episode of insuring india a podcast by digit insurance and i'm your host sabri saran stay with me for this wonderful conversation with dr ranjit who's the head of pet insurance at digit general insurance He tells us about what all things a pet insurance entails, different covers available to them, the kind of diseases pets are exposed to and the lack of awareness surrounding it among the pet owners, how expensive or affordable such covers are and more. Listen in. Dr. Ranjit, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Thanks, Ravi. Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be here. So, Dr. Ranjit, we are talking about pet insurance today, but before we get into that, can you tell me how big the pet market is in India? Yeah, if I uh, good question basically. So, if I remember correctly, uh, as per market research organizations, I think uh, the pe- Indian pet care market size is estimated around seven thousand four hundred crore in two thousand twenty one, which is still you know growing as we know. as we speak right uh, as you know pet insurance market in india is uh, still in its uh, early stages i would say right uh, but we can see that you know the demand is growing uh, rapidly 
uh, estimated uh, the population itself is you know uh, close to you know one crore. So right. that, you know we have a potential to grow. Right. Got it. But Dr. Ranjit, uh, like you said, insurance for pets is not. We have heard about a lot, especially in India, right? So many pet owners, in fact, might be unfamiliar with the concept of pet insurance as a whole. So could you explain what all it entails and why is it important for Indian pet owners? True, actually, it's a it's a novel concept in India. But if we uh, look at other countries, insurance for pets have been uh, present for decades now. Different plans are available for dogs, cats, horses, rabbits, livestock, exotic pets, and so on. Right. So many many costs in, in incurred for diagnosing, treating, uh, or hospitalizing the pet will be covered under this. So in addition to you know certain non uh, non medical coverages as well uh, are included in the different plans. Okay. So broadly there are three types of plans in uh, pet insurance. Uh, to say so, uh, this could be a cover for life or a lifetime cover. Right. Uh, where the pet is covered for the entire life with options for renewal till the uh, till life, life's end basically, or a maximum age as decided by the insurer. Right. Okay. All medical conditions are covered as long as uh, the policy is renewed. Right. Okay. And uh, this is a type of that is very common in India. I mean that is the one which is most common in India. Right. There are other covers as well. Say uh, a time limited plan where a specified uh, time limit is fixed for each condition. Okay. So, say for example, 12 months, uh, a pet is diagnosed with diabetes and it's covered for 12 months. After that, other conditions are covered, not that condition. Okay. So, it's more like that. So, an exclusion after 12 months. There are maximum benefit plans where uh, the particular condition is covered up to a certain limit. Right. Then the other conditions are covered, but not this one. So, different, okay. different, you know, mm. plans are there. But the other last two are not very popular. The cover for life or the lifetime cover is the most popular uh, across the world. Okay. And we have that in India. And uh, speaking of why pet insurance is important to uh, pet parents, majorly it helps to minimize the overall co- you know, cost of keeping a pet, right. especially with the uh, you know, unexpected veterinary bills for diagnosing, diagnosing and uh, treating an illness or injury. Right. So most of us are aware that uh, veterinary bills are increasing with uh, you know, advanced hospitals around. So right. this is a help for uh, pet owners. Uh, it helps the pet you know, to get better treatment. So it definitely, you know, helps the pet parent. Okay, so you're saying that in India, that's not the case. Uh, we don't have that market actually. So we have a better coverage, I would say. Lifetime right. coverage is always better. Right. So you can renew the policy till the you know end of pet's life. There are maximum benefit plans in you know uh, different uh, countries, UK and the uh, US, where the coverage is uh, you know coverage is for one particular condition. Once right. that limit is exhausted, that coverage stops. Okay. So it has to be different condition. Then the client can you know claim for that. So okay. it won't add value to the customer much, but the lifetime cover makes sense. Right, got it. So from an India perspective, I actually want to talk about uh, all the different types of covers in more detail that are available in the market today, especially in the Indian market. Uh, and I think we can maybe divide it into health and non-health covers that exist and you can tell us what all covers are available under health and what all covers are available under non-health. Uh, definitely. So as you said, you know, we can broadly classify this into uh, health and non-health sections. Uh, right. This is a broader cl- uh, classification, I would say. Right. Uh, under the health cover for pets, it covers all medical expenses related to a- any illness or injuries. The medical expenses include cost of vet consultation, cost of medicines and consumables, cost of medical tests uh, or any diagnostic procedures done, cost of surgeries uh, required, cost of hospitalization or boarding uh, the pet in a vet clinic. Right. So these are the coverages you know that's available uh, you know normally under this. This may also cover certain specialized therapies, uh, therapies such as uh, stem cell therapy, chemotherapy, right. uh, PRP, and so on. So this is an added benefit you know uh, for the people who opt for this health cover okay okay and uh, to elaborate on different coverages that uh, you know we we can see actually you know hospitalization cover is one actually uh, there are listed illness cover where uh, a listed uh, medical conditions are uh, uh, given on the on the policy schedule right. the client can claim for uh, any of these conditions if the pet suffers we have critical illness cover which covers almost all the critical illness like you know heart disorders uh, cancer all those serious ones, you know, which is which can lead to fatality as well. Right. So those kind kind of conditions, chronic illness cover again, you know, covers long term conditions basically. So right. conditions that last for the rest of you know pet's life. Right. So you have that uh, you know option to you know get an option to you know cover that condition actually. Uh, OPD cover is there. So 
hospitalization makes it mandatory to you know get the pet hospitalized for say a, a specified time period Correct. maybe it can be a 12 hour or 24 hours normally so hospitalization is required for hospitalization cover to trigger right. but opd on the other hand uh, covers almost all the major you know uh, simpler conditions right. uh, pet doesn't have to be uh, admitted in a hospital the treatment can be taken or you know over the opd or the you know okay. during the day so this is similar to what there is for health insurance it would uh, be in exactly general. the same right. yeah that's right okay got it uh, to talk about the non-health cover actually so uh, we have third party uh, liability cover so this is a big you know uh, cover in the, in the uh, european market basically where uh, you know uh, legal issues are more uh, in india also you know people are aware of it because uh, people take pets to uh, parks uh, common areas where the pet can bite some and not cause you know third party damage to uh, the properties uh, so this is a huge cover that is uh, in focus right now so basically this covers uh, any damage caused by the pet to any other person or to his property okay got yeah. it and we have a theft or straying cover uh, theft and straying basically if the pet goes missing right. uh, we will cover the cost of the certain sum insured you know whatever depending on the plan uh, yeah. whatever is mentioned you know it will be covered and they also cover the advertising cost also so say if the pet goes missing they can advertise on different forums right. the cost of that can be reimbursed okay. uh, right. we have mortality cover okay. okay mortality cover again you know if the pet is dead again there is a sum insured pet and this is more like you know uh, life insurance for human beings okay yeah right. so dr ranjit you actually spoke about the uh, health covers that are there for pets uh, but i actually want to understand how aware do you think pet owners or parents are when it comes to different diseases a pet dog can be exposed to? Like for example, I didn't know that there are all these critical illnesses that even a pet dog can have. So can you tell us some of the most common diseases that we typically see among pet dogs? Sure. Uh, so the most common would be, you know, the ear infections, skin infections, right. uh, soft tissue injuries. Right. It can be a dog fight or maybe, you know, uh, while running in a park, the pet gets injuries. Right. So those kind of injuries. Uh, those are the most common ones. But, you know, there are uh, serious conditions as well. Uh, say, for example, uh, a fracture of a hip, uh, an accident happens. Uh, that is a major condition which re may require, you know, surgeries, hip right. replacement, all those stuff. Some breeds like, you know, German Shepherd, Labrador, Golden Retrievers, these are very prone to, you know, certain conditions like hip dysplasia. Right. So dysplasia, uh, you know, basically we would need to replace the hip all, altogether. Right. So depending on which joint, you know, the cost can change. But Dr. Ranjit, I don't think there is a lot of context on how expensive the treatments of some of these diseases that you mentioned are. Because many people might actually know how much their own hospitalization or visit to doctor cause. And I'm sure many of us also don't know that. So just for context, can you give us an idea of how much a visit to a vet can cost or how exp expensive some of the diseases you spoke about can cost? Sure. So to give a little context in India, a surgery involving a hip bone, like I said, uh, for a hip fracture right. or a dislocation may cost anywhere between 55,000 to 75,000 uh, Indian rupees. Okay. And this may even go further up depending on how many joints or you know, bones are involved. So that cost is, you know, really high. Uh, it can happen once again as, as well, you know, if it's a dysplasia. Right. So hip dysplasia also, like I said, uh, some large breeds of dogs, you know, are prone to this. It's a, it's a genetic, uh, you know, uh, predisposition, what we say. Right. So that, again, condition needs a replacement surgery. The cost will even go further. So 75,000 is the starting and then it would go further up, depending on how many, you know, joints were replaced. Right. Uh, one more thing is actually, you know, say, a lot of people take pets there to uh, their pets to uh, parks and so right. so problem is actually you know there are other pets roaming around the area right. so ticks are very common so that gets transmit uh, you know transmitted uh, from one pet to another right. and these can transmit uh, different diseases so tick bone fever is or tick fever what we call is a serious condition if it's not treated in the you know first few hours okay. so those kind of treatment normally it can be treated within 24 or 25000 Right. But if that gets worsened, say internal organs are damaged, kidney damage is there, right. the cost would you know escalate really great, and it's very fatal as well at a certain stage. Okay, got it. So actually, the risks you spoke about are actually quite diverse, and the fact is that the breeds that we have for dogs is also quite a lot, right? So I actually want to understand from you 
uh, how or what parameters are taken into consideration when an insurance company is underwriting a pet insurance policy okay great uh, so as part of underwriting and acceptance of a proposal there may be medical evaluation right. which is uh, mostly a questionnaire kind of thing which is related to health and vaccination status of the pet right. based on the answers to these questions the proposal would be taken up further some insured may insist on a medical examination report from vets or recent medical test report right but this is very rare but normally a questionnaire will be there asking for medical uh, medical questions basically and uh, they will ask for uh, health status and vaccination status okay understood i want to now talk about the entire process because i'm sure a lot of us might probably be aware of how easy it is to get a motor insurance or a health insurance in india but uh, when it comes to pet insurance how easy or difficult is it for someone to get pet insurance for their pets uh, and what all is required and how seamless is the entire process i'm asking this because i also uh, when it comes to making a claim uh, what typically needs to be done in case one has to file a claim etc is it also as seamless yeah most of the insurer have uh, the pet insurance plans available on their you know direct website right. or with their you know approved partners or agents right. so it's pretty easy for the clients to you know log into the portal and you know buy the policy that's one right. uh, and different insurers have different you know customer journeys designed most of them are pretty simple uh, to be honest right. and uh, pet parents need to give their name contact uh, number address right. details along with the pet's details such as name age uh, breed gender and maybe uh, and definitely the identity of the uh, basically a proof of identity of the pet okay. so this can be photos or even a microchip number okay. so it depends on the insurer basically what they are asking for uh, can you tell us what a microchip number is so it's a, a, a grain uh, you know it's a, it's a injectable uh, thing right. basically rfid tracking is there actually so it's a injectable uh, it's the size of a grain actually rice grain okay and uh, it's just inserted in the below the skin and it can you know identify the animal at the claim stage onboarding stage it has a unique number so there is okay. a device which will track uh, the identity of the pet actually okay. so it's so pretty is basically to make sure that a person is in making a claim for some other dog you using some other already existing pet insurance policy as well exactly that's 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 idea actually and moreover you know uh, different dogs of same litter would look the, exactly the same okay, so yeah, identifying okay. that is a big challenge for insurer as well as you know even the doctors okay. so that is one thing you know that we can uh, i mean insurers can ask for okay okay and this is uh, you know the uh, initial identification basically there would be a simple questionnaire like i said earlier health status uh right. before completing this so once the payment is processed the policy is issued to uh, pet parents okay Understood. and claim i would say uh, depends on insurer some may ask for a claim form but nowadays it's all you know digital right. so people can you know uh, take pictures of bills right. uh, invoices medical reports test reports and upload uh, different insurer provide different platforms to upload the documents and claim is registered and once it is assessed you know the payment is done so you just need to upload your uh, bank account details or a cancel check right uh, it's pretty easy actually right understood uh, but since we spoke about claims and uh, you know what all uh, is required when somebody is buying a policy uh, i think we have missed one major element which is the premiums uh, so uh, i want to understand from you what factors are taken into account when determining the premium for a pet insurance policy and also how expensive or cheap are these covers are these affordable uh, definitely uh, so it it depends on a lot of factors to be honest right. so for pricing you know a, a range of parameters are considered so normally uh, parameters such as species breed age uh, whether the pet is uh, neutered or not uh, the geographic location so these are the most common ones there might be additional parameters which may be factored uh, in such as you know uh, the waiting periods or the co-payment opted by the client or built under the plan right. so these are the basic factors and uh, insurer may also decide to give discounts if the pet is microchipped how many pets are being insured and which business channel etc okay yeah. and uh, to be honest premium depends on a lot of factors as we already discussed uh but you can get starting price for a young small breed of say a pug right. around rupees 1000 as well in the market okay it's that cheap it's right? that cheap actually so okay. it depends on the age and size and you know uh, health status basically okay understood uh, 
Dr. Ranjit, I want to leave you with just this last one question. Uh, this would be specifically beneficial to the pet owners. Uh, I just want to know what are some hygiene checks pet owners can do to make sure the health of the pet is always kept in check and they can ensure a healthy and long life for their pets. Okay, that's brilliant. Uh, so from my side, I would definitely say that, you know, uh, brushing their coat regularly, that's one. Right. Second is cleaning their ears. When when we say cleaning the ears, we should not be you know uh, uh, putting something inside the ear which is damaging. Right. So it we should you know be very careful. Right. Uh, checking their teeth and gums for any infections or a decay. Right. Uh, food particles remaining in the teeth is a problem again, very common one. Trimming the nails, bathing the pet as needed. So bathing again you know depends on activity level and you know where the pet is staying. So that uh, obviously, you know, a vet can recommend based on the size, activity level and the breed of the pet. Uh, we need to keep the environment very clean uh, for the pet so that, you know, clean water, hygienic food, healthy food, I would say. Uh, and regular checkups, you know, at a, at a veterinary clinics. Uh, I, I, I think I covered most of it, actually. And one important thing is the, uh, you know, plenty of exercise, basically. Right. Understood. Thank you, Dr. Ranjit. I think I'll let you go now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the Insuring India podcast. Thank you so much, Shabri. It was a pleasure. Thank you for ha- having me. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and learned how we can better protect and care about our furry babies. That's all on this episode, folks. Do subscribe to us to keep getting notified whenever we drop something new. Thank you and see you next time.